everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're good and Merry Christmas! <laughs> Merry Christmas. Well, Christmas will have already passed. This is gonna go up on the 27th, so it will have already have happened. But for me, it is Christmas morning and I am going to unwrap all of my Christmas book presents. I just FaceTimed my family and we all unwrapped our presents and I waited to <laughs> unwrap all of my bookish ones so I can unwrap them on here with you guys. So we've got like three categories today. We've got presents from my grandparents. We have got presents from you guys from Amazon. We've got presents from my parents as well. So I think we're gonna do them in that order because my parents won't mind going last. <laughs> But let's just get into it, shall we? I can't believe how lucky I am to have received all of these books. Like, this is a lot, this is gonna be a lot of books. <laughs> I don't know how many it's gonna be, but it's gonna be quite a few. So thank you in advance to everyone who bought me books. And let's just do it. I'm so excited. Christmas is the best time of year. <laughs> We're so sorry to be here, seriously. But I, this is the dream. So these are all from my grandparents. Thank you guys so much. I know you'll be watching. Let's see what this is. <gasps> Ooh! So first is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Yes! <laughs> yes! This is a horror. I think, did this win Goodreads Horror of the Year this year? Yes, it did. Horror is a genre I definitely want to get more into reading. I've enjoyed what I have read from horror, but I haven't <laughs> read loads. And all I know about this is that it is about a girl whose cousin contacts her saying that there's like some shady shit going on with <laughs> her new husband and his family. And so she travels there and like she's stuck in the house and like everyone says something whack happens with mushrooms. <laughs> You know what? I'm just gonna leave. But I'm really excited to read this. I already have a video planned that this is gonna be in. I haven't planned any of the other books in that video, but I know that this is in that video. So hopefully I'll be able to do it soon and read this. Super excited to get to this one. Thank you so much. Ooh, okay. So next we've got The King of Crows by Libba Bray. So this is the last in the Diviner series, which I have a mixed relationship with. I have loved books from that series and I gave the most recent one like a 2.5. So we've got a very mixed relationship. This is the last in the series. I'm really excited to finish the series off and just be like done with it to finally finish some series. Me every time I finish a series. I'm free. I've gone out. It's set in New York 1920s and it's like a Scooby gang group of friends trying to take down like ghouls and demons and they all have special diviner powers. I've heard super mixed things about this last one. <laughs> I haven't heard many great things about it, but I am excited to be back with these characters that we know really well and I'm excited to see how the story is all wrapped up. So this is gonna be one that I am hoping I'm gonna get to, I think probably in like February, January, February, I will get to this with a couple of other books. I'm yeah, I'm nervous. <laughs> you should be. I just really want to get this series done. <laughs> I'm trying to unwrap it so you can see too. What is that? Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next is The Gilded Walls by Roshani Chotsky. Okay, so real talk, right? Period T. I was never like that interested in this book. I know, I think it's kind of like a heist book with like a group of friends. I remember loads of people wrongly said this was like a rip off Six of Crows when the author is POC. And like, in my view, we've, when this is a, often a discussion on like book Twitter, but like, first of all, Six of Crows does not own the heist <laughs> genre of books. And secondly, like POC authors can write tropes that we would other see, otherwise see as tired because like they haven't had the chance to write them. Anyway, regardless of that, I was never like super interested in it. It was kind of just a book that I didn't pick up on. But then I was listening to the, oh, why can't I remember the name? Oh, the First Draft Podcast. It's a podcast with loads of authors who get interviewed about how they write and tips for writers because I do eventually want to write. Have I written anything in the like four months I've been saying I want to write? No, but I've been doing the groundwork. <laughs> Delusion. <laughs> Convince yourself. And I just loved hearing Roshani Chotsky talk. She has a very 
similar path to me in talking about how she always knew she wanted to tell stories, but she felt pushed into journalism, which is what happened to me. I've always wanted to tell stories, but I felt like the most uh, realistic thing was journalism. So I did a journalism degree like her and I've fallen out of love with it like her. And she also spoke about how she loved drama. So I just feel like we're the same person. <laughs> I was listening to the podcast, I was like, wow. wow. We yeah, are kindred spirits. spirits. <laughs> that made me just so much more excited to read this. Again, I don't know too much about it. I think it may be set in like, oh yeah, set in Paris. And I've heard it's like a bit of an older YA, which is the kind of YA I like to read. Like a bit of a mature YA. So isn't that cover just gorgeous as well? I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Oh, okay, exciting, exciting, exciting. This is The Mystery of the Blue Train by Agatha Christie. I... <laughs> no, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. This edition is so gorgeous. Look at it. And then on the inside. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. <gasps> This is so gorgeous. It's like cloth bound. Wow. The story with this is basically I am working my way through all of Agatha Christie's books, particularly the Poirot series. Sorry, I'm making my way through the Poirot series. So this is the sixth in the Poirot series. I haven't read the fifth one, which is the big four. I do own that though. And so on my Christmas list, I just put the next one that I didn't own so I could get it in advance. I don't know too much about it. It says on the back, you could perhaps love a thief, mademoiselle, but not a murderer. I love Agatha the Christie's books. I'm a big murder mystery fan. I love a classic murder mystery. So I'm very excited to get to this. I always like to put like on my wish list and ask for and buy the kind of like special editions, the really gorgeous editions of the books if they do have them. I know you can get like all the matching paperbacks, but I just find them a bit boring. Whereas like when you can have something like this, like why wouldn't you? Like I just, I just love it more. As someone who likes to collect books, I just think they're so gorgeous. I adore adore that. That's like one of the most beautiful books I've ever seen. I think that's so stunning. Okay, and then this is the last one from my grandparents. Oh! Okay! <laughs> We've got Hunting Prince Dracula by Kerry Maniscalco. For ages I've been talking about how I read Stalking Jack the Ripper. I kind of enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. But it could have been great, you know what I mean? You did your best, but I guess your best wasn't good enough. But I never had had the second one, so I am so excited to have the second one so I can continue on with this series. I was like in such a mood for this in like October, November, kind of autumnal times, because I feel like it's perfect for that kind of book. I remember I read number one, like in the days before Christmas last year, so it's been a year since I read that. The first one is about Audrey Rose, who is like, she's kind of like, I'm not like other girls. <laughs> Jack Thripper is killing people. She's trying to figure out who it is. There's a romance with Thomas Cresswell. And I assume in this one, we're gonna be hunting Prince Dracula. So that's very exciting. <laughs> okay, so next I am going to open. Oh my God, we have got a lot of books here. <laughs> so I'm gonna open this one first that was very kindly gift wrapped. Oh my God. Okay, I'm really excited to get this. Who is this from? From Megan from Megan's Book Corner on Instagram. So this is Disfigured on Fairy Tales Disability and Making Space by Amanda Leduc. Leduc? I'm not very good at pronouncing names. But this is a non-fiction book speaking about how badly treated disabled characters are in fairy tales and Disney movies and stuff like that. I'm always wanting to read non-fiction. I particularly want to get back into non-fiction a bit because it's hard when I'm making loads of vlogs to fit non-fiction into them and a lot of people aren't interested in non-fiction, but I love it. I used to read half non-fiction before I started my booktube channel and then I just stopped. I'm really intrigued with this. It sounds super educating. It is pretty short as well. It's pretty small. I think disability is, isn't really something I've read about before. I've maybe read like chapters on it in some nonfiction, but I haven't read a whole book on it. Disability is something we don't discuss enough on booktube and stuff like that. So I'm really excited to read this. So thank you so much, Megan. That is so kind of you. This is a story about a girl named Becky. Let's open this one next, because I wrote on it Nicole, because <laughs> it was the first one that arrived. So I know it's from Nicole, because she couldn't put a note with it. There's two books in here, she said, and she said one is for my birthday and one is for Christmas, because my birthday is at the end of January. And so because she's from Australia, it makes sense to like save on shipping and stuff. No. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs>
I was like, oh my God. That shit took me, caught me off guard. I did not expect it. Nicole! Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Nicole has got me the strange case of the alchemist's daughter and the sinister mystery of the mesmerizing girl by Theodora Goss. If you watched my best books of 2020 video, you will know that this is the only book that is one of my best of 2020 that I didn't own. I read the audiobook of this and I've always wanted to own the physical version and now I do. <laughs> I'm so happy. She also got me the last book in the series. I do own the second one and now I've got the last one and I am terrified but also so so excited to read this. But I've talked about this a lot so you probably know already. Hang on, the sun is like shining in in a really weird way. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll try and keep up here because if I'm like here it's just my chin is really shiny. She's huge but she's so beautiful. She's a mammoth of course. <laughs> I've got a really pointy chin as it is so this isn't <laughs> <laughs> so in this we follow the Athena Club who is a group of girls who are somehow linked to men from classic Victorian history and they are trying to find out the truth about what these men have really been doing. Sherlock and Watson are in this and they help the girls and work with the girls and it's just the perfect Victorian mystery. It breaks a fourth wall in really cool ways. They will just like cut in to what one another are saying. Like when the book is happening, if they're not happy with what is being said, they'll cut in and try and amend it. I love this series so much. So thank you so much, Nicole. I can't believe that. I'm so shook. That's so kind of you to get me those. They are some of the most gorgeous covers as well. Like I'm just obsessed with the, the covers of these. And yeah, I'm so happy. Oh, thank you so much. That's so amazing. This one seems to be missing its note. So if you did get this for me, please let me know. But this is When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain by Nivo. I am so excited. This just came out, I think a couple weeks ago. And these are really short stories. The first one is The Empress of of Salt and Fortune, which I read and really, really enjoyed. They're these kind of like short stories with this cleric called Chi. They all follow the cleric, find meeting people and finding stories out about them. And it's very much inspired by like Asian mythology and stuff like that. The first one was so touching and beautiful and moving. These books are so good for stuff like readathons and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to get this one. Please let me know if you're the person who got this for me because I'm very thankful. Okay, so these are from KN from Pepper Reads. Oh, thank you. This is so kind of you. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really happy today. Yeah, this is for all of us. Thank you so much. KN got me first Forgotten Women the Writers by Jing Sheng, which I am ecstatic about. I have really been wanting to continue this series. This is an amazing series. I have read Forgotten Women the Leaders. There's four in total, so this is my second one. And it's all about forgotten women through history. It's non-fiction. You basically just have like a couple pages on them telling you about all the extraordinary things they've done. Oh my God, this one has incredible artwork in too. So there's amazing artwork with all of these women by loads of different artists. Oh my gosh, oh my God. Gosh, I can't wait to read this and see all this amazing artwork. I just have a bit of an obsession with learning about forgotten women throughout history. I just think it's literally the most interesting thing to read about. It's only like 200 pages long. They're really accessible. And I really appreciate because the author is an Asian woman, I think there's a real effort that these books be really diverse. So it's women from all over the world, from all different time periods, from all different cultures, from all different countries. And so I think it's just such a rich history of women. So thank you so much for that. And then they also got me The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. I believe this is horror as well. This is one a lot of people have been speaking about. I don't know too much about it other than it's about some friends who, oh yeah, okay, yeah, 10 years ago they shot an elk and now they're being stalked themselves and hunted. Very intrigued, very intrigued. I'm really interested in having that conversation. I have to tell you that. So thank you so much. That is so generous and kind of you. I, I still can't believe it when I get sent books. Like it kind of almost makes me cry. <laughs> We've got two more Amazon parcels. We've got a really big one here. Let's open this one first. 
Oh, oh my God, Gabby! Gabby, thank you so much. Oh my God, Gabby, thank you so much. Gabby has got me the Year of the Witching by Alex Henderson. This was up for horror as well. We've got loads of horror in this book haul, which bodes well for me wanting to read more of it. So I know this is like a mix of horror, fantasy, and historical fiction. It's about that kind of like Salem witching period. I am going to be co-hosting Erin from Booked and Busy's book club where we're going to be reading this. This, I will make sure I link the announcement video for that so you can go check the Busy Bee book club out. So I'm really excited to read this and chat about it in like greater depth. I'm always wanting to read more witchy books. There is this book that I, I can't remember what it was. I got it out of the library when I was really young and I remember it was about witches and like Salem trials and I just loved it. I just have a really vivid memory of reading that book and I'm constantly chasing it trying to get that again again. Push me up against the wall, give me a kiss, then I might get excited. Thank you so much Gabby, that is so kind of you. And now I've got one more Amazon parcel and it's a big boy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, we've got a lot of books here. <laughs> oh! Oh wow! Okay, so these are all from my aunt. Hi Debbie! <laughs> okay, wait, okay, let's get into this. Okay, thank you so much for all of these. So, first we've got King of Scars by Lee Bardugo, which I am so excited to own. That's what Christmas is about, isn't it? Yeah. I have not read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom yet, but I promise you I will be reading it soon. I know I keep saying that. <laughs> and this is like the next kind of series in the Grishaverse. I know this is following Nikolai, who is like the prince, if I remember, and Zoya, who was another character in like the original Shadow and Bone trilogy. And then I I think Nina from Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom also has quite a big role in this. I love the cover for the sequel to this. Is it Rule of Wolves? I'm pretty sure it's Rule of Wolves. And I love Ninth House. <laughs> I will die on this hill. I just love Ninth House by Lee Bardugo so much. So I'm so excited to get into her other stuff. And then I don't know if you know this, Debbie, <laughs> but you've bought me. This is so cool. I don't know if you can tell on the on Amazon because you've bought me two books by the same author, but it's different pen names. <laughs> is it a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? I ask you. Is the cult incident? First, let's talk about Come Tumbling Down by Sean and Maguire. This is the fifth, I think, in the Wayward Children series. I have read all the first four, but I don't... I've never owned them. I've always just listened to the audiobook. But I really love this series. I give them all like a really high four stars. So I wanted really badly to own this one before I read it. I want to eventually collect all of the series. We are following these kids who can open doors into these worlds that are perfect for them personally and they can live in these worlds but sometimes they come back and then it's really hard for them to readjust to this world which is so shit for them. Sometimes follows us at Eleanor West's home for wayward children which is where these children can go to kind of cope with it or it follows them in their portal world. We're back in the home in this one and I think I usually prefer the ones in the home but we're going to be focused on Jack and Jill again who are characters that we have had in number one and two but particularly in number two it focused on their story so I am so excited for this really really excited and then we have also got Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker but it is Sean and Maguire still so this is a book that is in Middle Game by Sean and Maguire. A. Deborah Baker is a character in Middle Game. And so I'm really excited to read this. Again, it's very short. Well, guess what, people? I get excited about small things. I just really love Sean and Maguire's writing. They're probably one of my most read authors. Thank you so much, Debbie. And then we've also got one of the books I've wanted for the longest time. And that is The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. So this is the third in the Truly Devious series, which is a young adult mystery series set at this school for exceptional children. The other two books have kind of flipped back and forth between murder that is happening at the school now and a murder that happened in 1930s but I'm not sure if that's kind of all solved now. I did think originally that this was the last book in the series but there's gonna be another one. These are like the perfect palette cleanser, quick easy read, so fun to read, like they're perfect for that so I am so excited to own this, thank you so much. Now we have got, I can't even hold them all up but we've got all the books from my parents. <laughs> My mum was like, I just looked and I bought you the ones that I want to read. 
See, I'm telling you, I have the mind of a master, master, I have the mind of a mastermind. What's that? I don't know, but you know, I'm so creative like that. Let's unwrap this one first that's on top. Oh, okay, hang on. <laughs> Everyone wait. <laughs> The first two books that my family have got me, I, I opened this one and that is the third book in the series and I was like, okay, I'm guessing they got me the second one. These are numbers two and three in the Themis Files by Sylvain Nouvelle. So we have got Waken Gods and Only Human. These are really a really cool book. Again, with this, I don't own the first one. I read the audiobook and I enjoyed it so much that I decided I wanted to get the physical books and eventually I will hopefully own the first one as well to have the whole series but I wanted to own the physical books and listen to the audiobook at the same time because the audiobooks are amazing like I think if you're only gonna own one own the audiobook but I loved it so much I wanted to own the physical books as well but this is very similar to the Illuminae files this is told through reports we have got a lot of interviews basically in the first one there's this like robot being built from these massive parts like an arm will be as big as a street and they're being like drawn out of the earth so like they're wrecking the world like drawing them out of the earth it's being built and there's a lot of like weird sci-fi stuff going on like where have these come from they've obviously been built by something that isn't us and that's what we really want to say but it's told in such a unique way also these covers are very pretty i don't think like the camera is like picking up on them enough so thank you so much Mom and Dad. <laughs> it's, it's so weird unwrapping these on my own. <laughs> oh, yay! Okay, this is really exciting. Not many people will care about this who are watching. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you <laughs> We don't care. But this is Save the Cat Writes a Novel. This is a book that a lot of people recommend if you want to get into novel writing. And I do. So I wanted it really bad. There's not much I can say because not a lot of you will care about novel writing. But I really want to get into writing really bad. <laughs> I always love a short book. I feel like I had run out of all of my short books. I'm like, I'm pretty stacked up now for a while. Oh, yeah! They got me The Deep by River Solomon with David Diggs, William Hudson and Jonathan Snipes. I have got the audiobook for this as well. I heard that the audiobook was incredible but again it feels like such a momentous book that I wanted to own it physically as well. So even just the first line of this is very impactful. It says Yetu holds the memories for her people, water dwelling descendants of pregnant African slave women thrown overboard by slave owners who live idyllic lives in the deep. They're past too traumatic to be remembered regularly is forgotten by everyone save one the historian this demanding role has been bestowed on Yetu so it is about this character who remembers all of the pain and trauma for you know, their family I guess I have just heard so many amazing things about this I'm very very excited to get to it what is this oh yay okay this is one I told my mom to buy specifically this is Supernova by Marissa Mayer this is the final book in in the Renegade series, which is a series about superheroes. I have not read any of this series this year. Like I read books one and two last year and then I didn't buy this this year. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Are you not embarrassed? I'm so excited to finally own it. And I've heard really good things about the end. Like I've heard, unlike like King of Crows, I've heard that the last book is the best book in this series. This society has the renegades and the, yeah, the anarchists. And our main character was born into the anarchists and she goes undercover to become a renegade to like feed information back. But then she starts to develop feelings for people and it's all very messy, but it's actually really enjoyable. I think Marissa Mayer is just a really great young adult author who I will read whatever she puts out. Loyal. I'm very loyal. Very, very loyal. Yeah. Yeah. I was loyal to you. I'm a very loyal girl. You yeah, know that, yeah. This will be one I'm gonna read at the start of the year, like I am. I just feel like it's time <laughs> to finally finish this series. Okay, this is this is one that I, again, I knew they'd got this for me. It is The Weight of the Stars by Kay Ancrum. So I have read The Wicker King by Kay Ancrum and this is their other book. I've heard so many good things about it. I've heard a lot of people prefer it to The Wicker King. I know it's something to do with space and the stars and like wavelengths, as you can kind of tell by the cover, but I, I don't know much more about it than that, but Kay Ancrum's writing is really interesting. It's very strange and surreal and a bit like fabulism kind of thing. So I'm really, really excited. I'm really, really excited for this. Come on, again, I- 
this is The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. So this is a book about how mass incarceration in prisons in America is like a new form of racism and control and slavery. Michelle Alexander was one of the main contributors in the documentary 13th, which is about mass incarceration and prison being a new form of slavery in America. And so when I watched her speak about the topic on that documentary, I knew it was something that I wanted to learn about more. So I'm really looking forward to reading this, but also I know it's gonna be a hard read. It's gonna, like in terms of just seeing that amount of injustice, like, it's such a hard but necessary read. I think this will be really, really educational. I think it'll be something that a lot of people in my family want to read as well. I think like my mum will want to read this, my boyfriend will want to read this because I think it's something we all need to learn and educate ourselves on. So really happy that I now own that. Okay, what next? Oh, fun. Okay, wow. 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 I don't know how well the like US ones of you will know this in Canada and all over the world, but this is the Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. So this is the, the UK Christmas number one book and it's selling like record amounts of books every week. Like it's selling more books in like its 15th week than most books sell in their first week. Like most bestsellers sell in their first week. It's absolutely taken over the UK. It says in a peaceful retirement village, four unlikely friends meet up once a week to investigate unsolved murders. But when a brutal killing takes place on their very doorstep, the Thursday murder club finds themselves in the middle of their first live case. So I'm really intrigued by this. Again, this is like one that's been massive in the UK, but I don't know if it's as big worldwide, but you know I love a bit of murder. You know I love a murder mystery. So any like modern murder mystery that comes out and is getting loads of hype, I have to read. I know this is one that my mum really wants to read too, which is why she's gotten it for me. That's so exciting. Oh my God, wow. I'm so excited to get to that one. Oh yay, okay, so this is The Couple Next Door by Shari Lapina, which is a lovely, classic, easy thriller. We love to see it. So this is about a couple who's at like a dinner party at their couple next door. The couple says, we don't want your daughter crying at our dinner table. So you take the child back to your house, put it, you know, in bed with the baby monitor and the child gets stolen. This is like a really popular thriller. I have read An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina and I really liked it. It was like a strong four star. So after that, I knew I wanted to get into her other stuff. So this is what I picked first. This is probably her most well-known best-selling one. Really excited to get to that one. Oh my God, I'm just so lucky. Look at all these amazing books. I like, I really can't believe it. This is crazy. <laughs> okay, and then we've got one last book. Oh my God, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. This is probably one of the books that's been on my wish list the longest. I've wanted this for a really long time. And that is The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis. So I've never read Ruta Sepetis and I feel like she's the kind of author that people speak about on booktube all the time. But this was one that came out last year. And I only know that it's set in Madrid, set during like the dictatorship, I think. I'm so excited to finally own this because I literally have wanted to own this for like years. This is one of the first books I ever put on my wish list. So if I hold this up, these are all the books I got for Christmas. How many did we end up with? 26 books for Christmas. That is insane. I feel so lucky. Thank you to anyone that bought me a book, all of my family <laughs> watching this. Thank you so much. We've done pretty amazing. Like there are so many amazing books here that I am just so excited to read. Let me know down below if you've read any of these, which ones I should get to first. <laughs> Um, let me know which ones you've read and also let me know what you got for Christmas What any books that you got for Christmas if there's any that I've recommended that you've got I would love to know. Thank you for watching this video If you've got to the end leave the wrapped present emoji so I know you've gotten to the end and Yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you very very soon. Bye